What's up, everyone? Chris here. Today, we're going to talk about a few of the minor upgrades that has happened to the Santa Cruz Heckler, a very popular bike around here, and obviously one of the most competitive mountain bike e-bikes there is. You know, there's a lot of e-bikes out there. There's a lot of different types, but the Santa Cruz Heckler has proven to be one of the most efficient and effective mountain bikes out there, as well as being an e-bike. So this year they changed not too much, but they have tweaked the geometry and gone away from Shimano's own battery to a third party battery, which is now 720 watt hours. This is gonna give you a lot more range, especially on more difficult climbs where you might wanna use the battery more. You're actually gonna get more usage out of it and not be afraid to run low. Again, every year people seem to be shying away from caring that much about a heavier bike. This bike alone was about 46 pounds last year. Now it's going to be a teeny tiny bit heavier. We're talking 48 pounds maybe, depending what model you get, obviously. They as well did introduce a C-level carbon. So that's something which is going to bring that price down. They're going to have a nice little aggressive price range, a bit more comparable with other brands out there instead of just having that double C, which shaves, again, more weight off but keeps the same stiffness in with two frames. You know just weight just doesn't matter too much even if you have a 50 pound bike if it can handle well and control well it's gonna feel lightweight in your hands their pro danny mccaskill obviously says it doesn't matter whether you have a 50 pound bike or a zero pound bike if you can control it if you're gonna have fun you're gonna ride it it is less about the weight and more about the feel and geometry build and design they tweaked a few little things in the geometry so it is a little more slacker the chain stays are all the same on all of them. So it is just the main triangle which changes throughout the size run to affect the reach. Overall, the reach has increased 10 millimeters this year. So it will be a bit longer of a bike to go with that more slacker progressive geometry. And this is going to make it easier to ride, easier to handle downhills and aggressiveness. But there's no real downside to the climbability of this because it's an e-bike. Anything that used to be a downside on a regular mountain bike, it doesn't really matter anymore. What is cool is they come in two wheel types, so a 29 inch wheel and a 27 slash 29, so 27 and a half on the back and a 29 on the front. Interestingly enough, the frames are not compatible. You cannot buy the 29 and put a 27 and a half on the back and vice versa. They are custom built to those specific wheel sizes so it will be a more effective way better ride experience for both wheel sizes i do see the mixed wheel size being very very popular i think it just gives you a lot more control a lot more freedom in the back end to throw around especially with a bit heavier of a bike but the 29 will still roll superbly nice and many people especially taller people won't even notice a difference they did increase the suspension to 150 mil so more than enough for pretty much everything you need to do without going to that bullet range where you're getting the 160 170 range in a full enduro just gotta be a little comfier on the rougher stuff and you'll still have a really good efficiencies out of it with a relatively lightweight setup to it as well they did add a flip chip in the lower link so you are able to adjust the geometry minorly with that it does um, make a big difference, I think. You know, you can put it in a low setting, really slack it out, get some faster downhill stuff, put it in the high setting, get a little more twitchy. And, and I've played with it on other bikes. I'm sure it's going to be the same with this one. Although it's a small change, it's a noticeable change, and it's appreciated. The third-party battery they use is a 720 watt hour, like I said, but is still covered by Shimano's warranty, which is cool. Obviously, a lot of people are using the same size battery, so I assume it somehow works in partnership with Shimano, but it doesn't really explain much or who actually makes it. Um, the battery is still removed with just a 4mm Allen key, um, or it can be charged on the bike. So either way, this is going to be really easy to charge on or off the bike. No worries there. Tire size, you can fit up to a 2.6 inch wide. So that's a pretty beefy, you know, a lot of bikes are starting to come with that. 2.5, 2.6 are where you're going. You can put a 200 millimeter brake rotor on the rear, which is awesome. And with e-bikes, again, a lot of people seeing that more as a standard now. 
just to get a little more stopping power, a bit more weight in the bike. It's good to have way more control and the option to have way more control as opposed to not, you know? Overall, they say they have um, increased the bike's progression by tweaking their kinematics. Um, that is essentially their fancy word for the progression and the movement of the shock. So they tweak that rear VPP triangle layout so it will be a little more efficient and what they're seeing is more e-bike tuned. Um, I assume it's taking in the consideration of the frame weight and how the bike handles, which is cool. Instead of just copying and pasting from one of their other bikes, they've really taken a listen to how this bike rides and feels. And now they've made major adjustments based on that. You can also put a coil shock in there if you really want to. They did redesign it and make it a bit bigger of a hole in space there, so you can fit that which is kind of cool. They look cool. Really doesn't make that much difference on a daily ride, but it is kind of nice to see. Overall, um, that tweak in the geometry, you know, it, it's something which everyone will maybe use once or twice, but it's nothing too crazy. The a slacked out ride is going to feel much better. This is going to ride really well. And I think the bigger battery is going to be for the more all day touring guys. Obviously, you can still shave a bit of weight and stick to the older batteries if there's some available. And you're going to be able to have a lightweight, really easy to handle bike. So it's like a compromise here and there. You get to have a bit better geometry to help compromise or compensate, really, that bigger battery. But overall, it's not like it was a bad handling bike to, to begin with. Price ranges are obviously a little bit lower with them starting in at the C-Spec um, carbon frame with the R model, you're now coming down and they're about 8,200 US dollars. And this still comes with a RockShox Super Deluxe Shock and a RockShox Lyric Select Fork. And it has SRAM NX Eagle drivetrain, obviously the same electric EP8 motor as previous years and all the models share that. All of the parts around it do change a little bit, but they go up there in price. You can go through the Eagle and then a little bit better rims, you know, a bit better suspension. Then you go to the XT model and they're all pretty similar priced around the 11 grand. Then you jump up to the high end ones with the CC and that's where you get X01 axis with reserve wheels. And that's a, uh, you know, 13,000. Uh, US dollar price so it's pretty high end you're getting pretty much the highest end stuff they didn't put the XX1 but I don't think that really makes too much difference in an e-bike you're really shaving off a lot of weight with very little change otherwise you're still getting all the factory um, suspension and Kashima coating if you want it's super sharp looking colors this year they have tweaked um, it's got like an avocado color this year which is really nice and again with that deep dark purple brown not brown but it's a dark color um I, they look superb i think they look really nice um the avocado i think looks really sharp and i think in person it's going to look even better so yeah we don't have any of these in yet there is some coming so i'll do definitely a more in detail look out at this but this is just reviewing what the specs are what this bike is, how it's changed, and we'll see um, if this is gonna be a big improvement. I think there's some major changes there, and I think a lot of people are now appreciating e-bikes more and seeing the benefit with a bigger battery. Where 50 kilometers used to be almost impossible for people to do, I think people are finding themselves hitting that limit pretty fast now, and putting in a bigger battery is gonna make it a lot more accessible for people. And then on top of that, that geometry change is just gonna make it, again, more accessible for people so it's an easier, easier ride. They're just gonna simply enjoy it. All right, hopefully we get this bike in soon. I do believe it has shipped and we'll do a little walk around video on it. Otherwise, appreciate you guys watching and uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks guys.